My name's Adam Carter Groves. I'm a game designer, game developer, LARPer, board gamer, games, 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 games. And I'm here to talk to you about save scumming. Uh, you might not know what save scumming is, so Wiktionary, everything on the, on the internet is obviously right. Uh, basically, it's like when you're playing, go, going through a choose your own adventure book and you save the page. And you go, oh no, it didn't mean to do that, and go back. If you like something, you save the game in a new save slot. If you don't like something, you then reload that previous save. It is terrible, it's awful, and it's bad, and I do it all the time. <laughs> so, however, it, the, re the reasons why are mostly to do with sort of the, the narrative flow of a game and the intended design purpose of that game. So it's, you're, you're hacking the story, you're going, I made this decision and these ramifications came out of that decision. I don't like that. I think that the person who designed this chose this badly. I'm going to go back and I'm going to redo what I did. Uh, it also grants the player a level of omniscience. It's for a really good narrative to come through in a game, the player wants to discover the narrative choices and discover plot line as the character does. So your choices and the character's choices align. But if you can go back and just change what you did, that means that you now have knowledge that the character does not and you're ending up sort of godlike directing rather than being part of the story. You're going into this game and rather than having a you have died through this uh, bad combat, you have died through this narrative choice or you finished the game, you've gone, what I've done here is so abhorrent and so terrible and I really hate it so much, I'm going to kill this character and use the reload function that's in this game to make up for some failings. I could go into death and games but other people have done that before me. So, However, that there are some times where it would be good. There would be headings, but uploads. Uh, it can be good, particularly broken games. Uh, one particular time this happened to me, uh, I was playing a really old, I think it was Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale, or one of the really old role-playing games. And while playing it, I got to a villain, and the villain started monologuing. I went, ah oh, yes, monologue, monologue, monologue. Combat happened, pause, disintegrate that villain. Loads of fun, bam, puddle of dust. Turns out they're meant to escape. They were meant to actually survive and run off and do loads of other things, and I then broke the game because of this choice and had to go back. It's a really good option when, if I get lots of save points. The last one was an hour ago, but that's not the point. Uh, there's also, I've had the same problem come up, which I couldn't help with, in XCOM. I was doing Iron Man mode, because I'm a badass, and got to the end of the uh, final mission, finally chose to do the final mission, and I got into there, and the game had broken to the point where no enemy spawned. This, unfortunately, it would be fine on a normal level, but this level, the doors in each section only open when you finished all the enemies off. So I had a group of elite badass troops walking around an empty alien spaceship going, oh, I don't know what's going on, help. And I had, and because it's Iron Man mode, it saves after every turn, so I couldn't restart the level. I had to use devastating psychic powers to destroy my own team in order to be able to play the game. So. There are reasons when it can be good. However, most of the time it's because player indecision and player failure. It's, I have chosen to do something and I don't like it. Or I have moved on, I, I've gone, I, I like you and it turns out they're a bad person. Or I have shot too many bullets now, I've run out of bullets. And you're just, you have changed your mind. And the inter Guess why this is an interesting one later on, but when it becomes the conclusion. But that's what most of it is. It's most of the player going, I did not like that. Th there's also the third way, which is the, the ugly side of things. It is the, it's bad design. It is when the player thinks they're doing something, when it turns out they're doing something else. A really good example of this, as anyone who's played L.A. Noir will know about the angry, angry, shouty man in L.A. Noir. There are three options when you're talking to people in L.A. Noir. It's an investigation game, you're a cop, going around talking to people. I was talking to a lovely woman who'd been in a car crash and was off her face on drugs. And she said something that I didn't quite trust. The possibilities you've then got are, I believe you, and I have evidence to believe you. I don't believe you, and I have evidence. Or I'm not quite sure. So I went, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to question this more. And he went, oh man, if you can calm down a moment and tell me what you did! And it's just really angry all the time. And there was no possible way I could have known that he was just going to scream at this woman's face. So I, uh, at which point, uh, you need to be a bit more clever with your design to work out and forecast and telegraph when you're going to be doing something and allow the player the option to find out what they're going to do. 
and a lot of this can be fixed with uh, flexible narrative options. Uh, one really good, for the most part in games, you get, I choose this path. That path will then maybe branch off narratively to do lots of different things, but you've chosen that path and you can't go back. I've, only seen, I've seen it done very rarely, and the main place I've seen it done is in the Stanley Parable of all things. It's a very good game and you should all play it. Uh, at the first, you get the first choice, which all know what it is, and then as you're going down this corridor where you've chosen, you have an opportunity to go back on your choice. You can, instead of carrying on this new path, you can go back to the previous one and carry on the game as normal. It's very rare to see that in a narrative game and very rare for it to come up as, a, as an option. So people don't tend to think about this as a, uh, the, a player and a character can change their mind. It seems to be if there is a choice, there is a choice and that choice is made and that's important and done. And this all came out from, which you can't see the heading unfortunately, uh, a game called Life is Strange. It is a similar construct, it's done by a games company I can't remember, and it's a similar construction to Telltale Games. You've got little area puzzles and you've got talking to people. Uh, but the twist in uh, Life is Strange, which is not a spoiler because it's the first thing that happens to you, is you have a time reverse mechanic. You can hold a button and you can go back through the conversation and start it again. This solves a lot of problems. This is a safe scumming as a game mechanic. You can go, I didn't like that, let's try that again. And you can come out of every conversation as the best possible person. But because it's part of the mechanics, this means it's part of the, uh, when the player gets this knowledge, it's because the character has got this knowledge and will do something different because of it. It's not that you've gone back and you've now reset the character. This character has learned at the same time you have. And they've done something really clever with this as well, because you only have a limited amount of time in which you can reverse. Once you've left the conversation, you, you've got a, you can't really go back and do it again. So you end up with being able to drop surprises on players and being able to make it so they have to decide a choice, but it does all of the forecasting and foretelling for you because you've gone, I've looked at all the options here and this is the best choice. And then if something narrative happens later on, they can't go back and change that choice, but they still feel like they can explore the area. And I think that a lot of games can learn from a lot of this stuff, particularly being a bit more mindful of different narrative choices on going back on your previous decisions and sort of rather than just having a big branching tree of narrative options have a little bit of cross connection where you maybe you, you said you hate that character but then they've endeared themselves to you and you now like them there should be a way to be able to change how you do things and also Iron Man modes Iron Man modes are a really nice thing in games when you're in an Iron Man mode every decision matters every time you show I'm going to do this it's got a weight behind it because you know you can't go back and when you've got saves and fallback options, that you'd lose all of that sort of gravitas to the choices. And additionally, you really need to try and push forward exactly what the player is going to do. We don't want shouting at Le Noir Man. What you really want is to be able to maybe highlight an option and see what the possible outcomes. The character, the character knows what they're going to say, but the player does not. And the player really needs to be informed on these decisions. And I think that's really important in games. And that's it.